Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and Sony has announced a very interesting set of uh, home audio products. They have the HTA9 and the HTA7000. Both of them bring something unique to the table and I have with me Mr. Gyanendra Singh who's the head of the audio business at Sony India. So first of all, welcome uh, sir and thank you so much for joining us today. Hi Samir, good to be here. Um, also, I just want to quickly get started because these products are new and just launched in India. Can you quickly run our viewers through the features that these product brings and, you know, which one is for whom and what do they need to know? Like uh, top of the line of both the devices. It's a soundbar. It's a premium soundbar. And that comes with uh, five speakers. It has uh, beam tweeters on either side, comes up with uh, up firing speakers and of course, built in subwoofers. And that's the format for the A7000. And A9 actually consists of four speakers. They each come with uh, with a tweeter, uh, expanded speaker, and of course the up firing speaker. So just four speakers. That's what A9 is. And the A7000 is like a more conventional soundbar in terms of uh, its form factor, but nothing conventional in terms of the technology that it delivers. Okay. And uh, what are the price points at which these are available in India? So I think I, I'll, I'll put it this way uh, to explain about the price point. So both the HT A9 and the HT A7000 come with two woofer options. Yeah. So when I talk of the HT A9, uh, the price would start from, uh, let's say, 171000 And then uh, you could have the other woofer option, uh, which goes up to 197000 The A7000... Uh, that starts at 1,51,000. And of course, there are certain combinations that you can have with that. And the price could go up to 2,8,000. It depends on what woofer combination you are picking up. And the A7000 has an optional rear speaker as well, SARS3S. So you could pick up the entry woofer and the sub, uh, sorry, and the, and the soundbar. You could pick up the other subwoofer and the soundbar and pair both of them with the rear speaker. So there are multiple combinations that a customer can uh, play around with uh, in case of the HTA 7000. So therefore, just to repeat once again, the price could be starting from 151,000 and goes up to uh, 2,8,000 depending upon what uh, combination you actually pick up. Yeah, this is a bit of an interesting setup. You see with the uh, A7000 is something like the HD Z9F we saw uh, last year as well, where you could pick up the speaker and the yeah. soundbar, uh, the soundbar and the subwoofer first, and then add the rare speakers later. So this is this is something that we've observed has been happening, especially with Sony soundbar. So is that something uh, you've learned from customer feedback or from the way people experience is that they dip their toes into soundbar territory first, and then they want a surround experience and this modular nature really makes it easy for them to upgrade, so to speak. Yeah, I think that's that's been there. So uh, first up, I think as a, as a nation, we consume a lot of content, a lot of entertainment content, a lot of music. So that's that's one part. The other is that uh, uh, we would want to have a good 5.1 or 7.1 or even further. That's the kind of combination that uh, people even in their homes uh, prefer. And we've seen even in our general portfolio, irrespective of the price point, uh, the real 5.1 uh, forms a large part of our sales portfolio. And even for the product that you talked about, the, the Z9F, uh, it was quite evident that uh, the sales along with the rear speakers uh, was much stronger. And people came back, uh, augmented uh, their earlier purchase with the rear speakers. Of course, time to time, we would run an offer on those. So it's, it's very clear. Uh, consumer preference is uh, he would want to have the rear speakers in that form factor. Okay, now, now speaking about the technology, like Dolby Atmos has been around for a really long time, but in the far past couple of years, Sony has been talking about their own 360 degree audio. So just for those that are not aware or they're, you know, dipping their toes into this technology for the first time, can you talk a little bit about 360 degree audio, how it is different or similar to Dolby Atmos and where consumers can find content to experience uh, 360 degree audio? Yeah, so Samir, I think uh, first up, continue to work very closely with uh, Dolby. A large part of the range uh, that we carry is Dolby uh, enabled. Dolby Atmos uh, has seen a very steady increase uh, in our portfolio. Yeah, 
finally everything gets driven by what the consumer is really asking for and everyone who wants to reach out is working very hard to take a good technology to the consumer so uh, in our case we've actually come up with the as you said is the 360 reality audio so uh, finally it's about being able to convey the way sound was recorded uh, to the consumer that's that's the objective and everyone in between is working with whatever resources that they have to carry out this particular thing and in sony's case it's been 360 reality audio uh, of course we've uh, we've seen this uh, in various of our devices and uh, these two devices also carry this it helps very simply put in three dimension if you put the consumer at the center of the whole affair in 360 degrees he should be able to place where the music or that particular specific bit is coming from in very simple language so that is what 360 reality audio helps do with respect to the music you place the source or where that music or the piece is emanating from within this 3 degree uh, 360 degree or three dimensional domain so that's the objective and uh, that's what we want to carry to the consumer uh, and yes uh, largely you can have lot of uh, uh, musical content right now which is available across uh, tidal and various other uh, platforms which actually have uh, 360 reality audio enabled content so that's available and we'll see a steady rise in that content i think there is a lot of technology the 5g coming around and capacity increasing of you know uh, larger files being moved with relative ease i think we'll see uh, all those content coming more and more now touching upon the a9 which is a very unique uh, setup for someone for a home theater you know the a7000 is very traditional it has the sound bar up front with various drivers a dedicated subwoofer rare speaker so someone who wants that yeah. perfect positioning can look at that but the a9 has just these four speakers that if you look at how sony is promoting it is you can place them anywhere they don't need to be symmetrically in front of your tv next to it, it it's it's very customizable to the way your room is which in the case for a lot of people the room is not symmetrically designed for a home theater right so so can you talk a little bit about the thought process behind these speakers how they work to give you that surround sound experience despite being placed a little up down or a little front behind from each other absolutely so i think as i say everything emanates from uh, what the consumer is looking for so the a9 makes it very simple and easy and it's the flexibility that it brings to the consumer so the a9 consists of these four speakers uh, each one of them uh, uh, has a front facing tweeter an x valent speaker and has a up firing speaker so these are the three units inside each of these speakers and there are four of them which constitute this complete system uh, you can place them asymmetrically and the thought process is very simple uh, that you don't for those people who would want to you know sort of retrofit a really top end home theater system this is where the a9 comes in and even otherwise if you want to just have the flexibility that it could be up or down or asymmetric uh, in your in your living space so that's where the a9 comes in and it gives you absolutely top end experience in terms of immersive entertainment so that's that's where it comes in it's aesthetically a very very nice product very good looking product uh, very well designed so that's that's been the thought process now uh, speaking of the specs that these sound bars bring one of the most interesting things that we noticed is hdmi pass through has been there with a lot of uh, sound bars that we've seen from sony but now it has been upgraded to support hdmi 2.1 which for example is the playstation 5 you can now just connect it directly to the sound bar right so can you talk a little bit about this upgrade how it's come about and you know wh- why this feature should be something that people really consider when looking at a sound bar uh, yeah so i think very simply put uh, the content that we are consuming now is more and more uh, if i can say so we are moving towards even a better content there is high res content so in very simple words you need to move more data so when you want to have a very good picture quality and all in real time no lag so what you need is a is a good transmission you need lot of transmission to happen and i think that's where the hdmi 2.1 comes in so it helps you move that large amount of data the heavy files seamlessly so that you can enjoy a content so in very simple language that's what it does yes it supports the 8k hdr the 4k 120 pass through and all of that that's the 
uh, that's the tech bit but in very simple words uh, the heavy lift and the movement more conveniently for the consumer that's what it does therefore as gmi 2.0 so uh, my last question here is more about uh, sony's portfolio of soundbars and the way the industry is moving now the past two years a lot of people have just been staying at home and we've really seen this trend of laptop sales go up because people are you know working from home televisions uh, people want to build, bring the theater home and it's after they've brought the television home is they realize that they need to enhance their uh, you know audio experience and Sony's portfolio is really large you know from the high end soundbars that you've just announced to the S20R the S40R at the entry level the uh, 8000 which is the single bar only which is you know the simple plug and play setup you have a very large portfolio of soundbars at your disposal so can you talk a little bit about how you've seen the market evolve or trends change or demand and consumer understanding change for home audio throughout these past two years and how sony has you know moved its products around to ensure that they're catering to their needs so can you talk a little bit about how the market has changed over the past two years yeah yeah samir so uh, before you know the uh, the so called pandemic sort of started uh, the category itself was uh, was seeing a decent uh, uh, decent growth the pandemic has accelerated and considering the amount of time that people have been spending in their home so the first thing uh, they've realized that you know, there are so many upgrades that they need to do about the home and let's talk of the home entertainment this has been one of the part because you're staying at home and you're consuming now far more content so that became a very strong uh, lever for both the uh, large screen television also not that large screen television do not uh, growing earlier strongly but i think that's been the impetus uh, and then there is the soundbar because then you want to have the full entertainment at home so i think that's been one driver the other driver has been because people are unable to go out and go to the movie theaters the other thing which is also been there with people is that i just don't want to have a soundbar depending upon what uh, you a uh, segment that you are really looking at i really want to have a good home entertainment setup a large television enabled television a very good sound bar and things like that so because you cannot go out for entertainment you want to do the best at home the third lever has been lot of high quality ott content available i mean you just look around uh, yourself and compare it to what was 2 years back yeah. and you will see so much of content uh, now being available so i think it's been a mix of all these three things which has really given uh, a real kicker if i can say to this segment and i think it's secular uh, but we find a slight bit of a bias more towards the mid to the high segment that's that's where we see a stronger growth uh, coming in for uh, for the sound bars that's that's how the last two years has been and and it continues to be quite strong so that's a very interesting point that you made i'll just follow up with one last question is the mid to the slightly mid to high tier we've noticed a lot of people even when we've talked to our readers and our viewers who ask us for buying advice and when we say spend that extra 3000 5000 even 10000 rupees more for a slightly better television or a sound bar uh, the consumer is inclined to do that because he knows he's getting a better value for money proposition at a slightly higher price is this something that you have also noticed that people are okay spending a little more to get that slightly better product oh absolutely uh, i mean there are countless examples that i can give you Uh, you talked about uh, a couple of those products yourself so when we launched our uh, uh, s40 just before diwali uh, i think that that's a very good example uh, it was uh, let's say the next step beyond the entry level and the response has been absolutely phenomenal it it comes with a wireless rear speakers and i think because people were able to find a value in that uh, i think that that outsold many of the uh, other products which are slightly uh, stepped down uh, as compared to that and we've seen this thing play out even in the mid to the high segment so i think that's that's very clear if the consumer finds a value and he will find a value if we are conveying the right product or taking the right product to him uh, you get that equation right uh, i don't think so people are really uh, not willing to spend uh, if they are able to see a value and uh, thankfully so far we've been able to hit that equation very well well those were all the questions that i had is there anything else that you would like to highlight about uh... the sound bar space or even these products that you have launched today that uh, i may not have asked my questions uh, no sir i think uh, we are absolutely uh, through with uh, whatever i intended to discuss the last point 
that I would really uh, urge the audience to do is that they must actually surely go and check out these products and uh, listen to them because uh, listening is what will move them. Oh, absolutely. And of course, they can check out uh, the review of the sound bars on uh, Digit as well. We have the A7000 in and we hopefully will see the A9 as well, hopefully sometime soon. And uh, thank you so much for joining me on this today. And for the rest of you that are watching, as always, you can subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with everything from the world of technology. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now.